welcome aboard. Today we're going to be talking about the propulsion system and braking system of the trains. We're going to start with firstly some terminology that is used and that I will continue to use for future episodes. The first thing is key in or key out. Now what this basically means is when you first arrive at your train in the morning you'll have a set of keys and you put them into the spot and you turn them on. This allows you to do whatever to your train. If you are keyed out, you can push buttons and switches and do stuff all day long until you want to. The train is not going to do anything. You have to have the key and you have to switch it on first before you can mess with all the settings and turn on and off the lights and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's what keying in or keying out would be. The next thing is called the reverser. The reverser is a handle in the train that allows you to move in a certain direction. Think of it as your car's gear shift. The order in sequence is forward, neutral, reverse, off. Now, again, when you first start up your train, you'll key it in and you move the reverser handle firstly to neutral and then into forward. And this will allow you to drive the train in forward. Don't drive the train in reverse, ever. If you, if you need to move the train into the other direction, then you need to get out of your driver cab and go to the other end and operate it in the forward direction that way. The next thing is the MDH, or motoring drum handle. This is how you get from work to home and home to work. This is what actually moves the train forward. This is what accelerates and decelerates the train. Probably one of the most important pieces of actually getting the train to move forward. And you'll notice that on these, this lever there's all these little spots that it'll click into like P1, P2, Coast. We'll get into what those are later. But yeah, that is what you use. At that lever you move up and down to move the train forward and slow it down. The last term is the dead man. Now what is that? Well, take a look at this picture again. You notice how the handle is crooked? Well, obviously it's not supposed to be like that, right? Well, it is. What you have to do is you have to take your hand and you have to straighten it out manually. It's spring-loaded, so if you let go of it, it'll switch back to this position. So you have to constantly apply pressure to straighten the handle out and then move it up or down. Now, why? Well, if you're moving the train forward and you let go of that, it will bring your train to a stop. It cuts the power to the MDH and will bring your train to a stop. Again, why, was, why is that needed? Well, let's say the worst of the worst happens. You're driving the train and you have a seizure or something. You're going to instinctively let go of the handle and it's going to bring your train to a stop. That way the train isn't just moving without any input from the driver. It's a safety feature. Okay, so let's dive in. This is either a Type 2 or a Type 3. Now, to move the train, firstly you need to be keyed in and you need to be going in the forward direction. Then you will move this handle up into the propulsion area, which is green in the, in the case of the Type 2s and 3s, and the Type 1s as well. You have P1 through P5. Each one of these is going to move the train forward at a different acceleration. P1 has the slowest acceleration and P5 has the quickest acceleration. Below P1 is MP. MP is minimal propulsion. Below that you have coast, which is not accelerating or decelerating. You're just gliding. And then below that are the SM modes. This is what caps a train at a certain speed and does not allow it to go any faster. SM1 doesn't let you go any faster than 55, so if you put it into this mode, then you can go up to 55 miles an hour, but it won't let you go any faster. Let's say you're going down a hill at 55 miles an hour, which there are areas of. If you're going on a hill at 55 miles an hour, you can click it into SM1, and it will prevent the train from going any faster than 55 down that hill. Kind of like cruise control, but it's a little different. SM2 will limit you to 35 miles an hour and SM3 caps at 15 miles an hour. Below that is your braking modes, B1 through B4. Again, B1 has the least amount of braking power and B4 has the most amount of braking power in this section. And you notice it's red for braking. 
The next mode below that is MSB. This is maximum service brake. This is the highest amount of braking power used in revenue service. If at any time you're tripped by an ATS magnet or if you let go of the dead man or whatever, it's some way that automatically brings your train to a stop, it will stop your train using the maximum service brake. Again, the highest amount of braking power used in service. And at the very bottom is MB, which is maximum brake, only used in emergencies. And now for some of the technical stuff. So P1 will accelerate the train at about 0.3 miles per hour per second. And all the way up to P5, which is 3 miles per hour per second. So just as a general tip, do not leave the platforms in P5, because that would give everyone whiplash. You do not want to be giving your passengers whiplash. The five braking steps are the same, with maximum service brake being a braking power of 3 miles per hour per second of deceleration and the maximum brake, the emergency brake, being at 3.2 miles per hour per second. Now the Type 1 controllers are basically the exact same, it uses the exact same thing, but the motors are powered a little bit differently. In P1 through P3, the motors are powered in series to propel the train forward, but the jump from P3 to P4 switches the motors from being powered in series to being powered in parallel. And this just gives a lot more power to the trains, and then P5 is also in parallel. Now, why did they do it like this? Well, the Type 1s are the only trains in the fleet to use DC motors. The rest of them use AC motors. And so they are powered a little bit differently. I also think that's partly the reason as to why Type 1s make very weird whining noises while they're in use. Um, I believe it has to deal with the DC motors. Now when the Type 4s came out, and it's true with the Type 5s as well, it has a special mode. Instead of only being limited to three speeds, 15, 35, or 55, it has more of a cruise control option where it can hold the train at any speed and can continue to do that. So you could hold it at 55 miles an hour going down a hill. You could hold it at 22 miles per hour going down a hill. Now we're going to revisit something I talked about in the last episode and I will explain why it's very easy to overspeed down a hill. Now I talked about it, the fact that within the train there's a governor that will stop your train if you're going faster than about 58 or 59 miles per hour. So let's say you're going down the alignment at 55 miles an hour and you realize that the alignment is now starting to be downhill. So you pull it back and you think you're in SM1, which limits the train to go no faster than 55 miles an hour. And you're all good. All right, I'm in SM1 and I'm going to cruise at 55 miles an hour. Then you look at your speedometer and you realize you are going faster than 55. Why? Well, you accidentally only went back to coast. You needed to go one more before you started getting into the speed maintain modes. So it's very easy to overspeed down a hill. If you don't realize that you're not actually in the speed maintain modes, you might accidentally be coasting down the hill and picking up even more speed, and then the governor kicks in and stops your train using the maximum service brake. that makes a little more sense and now I hope you know how the train moves and how it's used and how the controller looks and works and functions and all that kind of stuff. If you're sitting up by the driver cabs, especially on the Type 2s and 3s, you can hear a lot of clicking action happening in there as the train's moving forward. And if you're perceptive enough, you can even sort of feel the propulsion changes and when the brake starts to be used. Um, so now you are probably going to be more aware of that the next time you're going to work or visiting Portland. And anyways, like usual, I just keep rambling on at the end of the video. I will see you next time with something that I've been wanting to talk about ever since I was talking about the signals. 
Um, it's how you call and select signals. I've talked about it before. If you haven't watched signal videos, by the way, you should ep check episode 5 on this channel. Go to my Max 101 playlist. It starts from the beginning, episode 1 on. And make sure you catch up on all the episodes so the next time you're in Portland, you'll be a genius on how the Max works. Without me <laughs> talking your ear off anymore, uh, I'm going to go now and I will see you on the next one.